How do you read your opponent? Reading your opponent is it, it's difficult, but it's de it's definitely doable. Most especially when you have a lot of experience. Re having a lot of experience, not enough knowledge, you can still read your opponent. Having a lot of knowledge, less experience, you can still read your opponent. Having low experience, low knowledge, you can still read your opponent. And having high knowledge, high experience, all the more you can read your opponent, right? But I always stress the fact when you're playing matches, when you're having your downtimes, downtimes being loading screens, intros, outros, stuff like that, even in between rounds, those are downtimes. Use that time to think about what your opponent has been doing in a round. So let's say your opponent is Horang and you're the Marduk, right? So your opponent has been doing a bunch of down three fours all the time, typically. Like in most of your games, let's say in three games, for three games straight, he's been always been doing down 3-4. And when has he been doing down 3-4? You notice that he's always been doing down 3-4, let's say after FF3. And he does it like FF3 on block, then down 3-4. And you don't backdash it. And as you can see, the in-game frame data tells you he's plus 6, plus 8. And then you can't challenge what happens next after down 3-4 because he could do RFS F4, you know, anything. And if he, of course, if he went for a really solid bin check, he could just do RFSD4 and you'll be locked to a plus one again. He can check you if you're not backdashing or stepping. So let's say during the match, you just held back. You didn't backdash, you didn't step, whatnot. So you're always forced to block the mix up, right? So FF3, down 3 4, RFSD4, you were forced to block that whole thing. And there are a few times you challenged, and when you challenged, you got counter hit launched because RFSD4 counter hit launches. And that put you in a bad spot because you didn't know how to challenge. Yet, so let's say let's put you in a situation where you have low experience, low knowledge. So from what you've gathered from three games straight is that after this particular mid kick that you know hurts a lot and has a lot of plus frames on Bob, since you're not backdashing the options, and he does down three four into RFS D four. What you gathered is that if I press after this situation, I may die. I could lose a bunch of my health instantly. So how do you tackle the situation now? So, since you know that he's going to do FF3 into down 3-4 for three games straight, that's been his game plan all the time, you will now have around three options, right? And those options being, since it's a low, there are two things you can do to a low. You can either low parry it or low crush a low. So in this case, Marduk, you could, not his, you there, up forward 4. You could up forward 4 or up forward 3 the low, or you could low parry the low, or you could down jab because why can you down jab because ff3 is only plus six and this is a 17 frame low 17 minus 6 11 and your down jabs 10 frames so that means she'll go first regardless of his plus six that's how fast your move is so now you have three options that you could use against that particular situation and now the mix-up will move further and the mind games will move further after you have done that. You've done that particular counter to your opponent. So now you've read that one particular situation out of the many situations that have played out throughout, give or take, nine rounds that have played since it's been three games played, right? So that's just one particular situation. And we're just emphasizing and over-exaggerating over to the point that that was the main thing that was killing you throughout those three games. So now that you have a counter based on that kind of a read and information that you've gathered from playing those three games, and that's what you've noticed, you establish that counter and use that counter. And it's what's important there is how your opponent reacts. So if your opponent does not adjust to it and still goes for this all the time, or starts going for something safer like F a DF1, you have now effectively limited his offense and got an around it in a sense. It doesn't mean you're scot-free, but it means you have your kind of free. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't necessarily mean. So it doesn't necessarily mean you're scot-free, but now you've lessened the extent of his mix-up because you've shown that you can challenge it. And that opens up the possibilities of what you can do in the game. So you're supposed to look at it at each particular situation, what you've gathered over a span of time, if you if the opponent doesn't want and done you right and use that information to adjust to your opponent regardless if you have experience versus that character or knowledge versus that character because all people across the board can read an opponent it is completely possible when you see that pattern and typically that pattern is called a flow chart and that's what we typically call it, a flow chart so his flow chart is ff3 into down 3 4 rfsd4 now the moment you knew that you counted it, down jab, low parry, uh, low crush. 
you now have an opening you can push yourself into to establish now your offense, your flowchart, or whatever it is you want to do to get some rounds in and potentially even get a game. Now, of course, that's at the very basic core of it. It's a very simplified version of it, the core idea of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It could go way deeper than that. But when you go way deeper than that, that's when you need more experience and more knowledge. Most, more, more importantly, the knowledge part. 